Hey everybody, I got a cup of joe over here and it's that terrible instant coffee. I'm going to get one of those instant coffee boxes and uh, I figured we can use this time together to try out something a little bit different and we'll do our best to enjoy whatever instant coffee really is. I mean, what is it? I mean, think about it. If you take instant coffee, what does it need to be in order to turn into this. So have you guys ever drank instant coffee before? I remember drinking instant coffee a lot growing up as a kid. Uh, I would go over to my grandmother's house uh, when I was living down in Boynton Beach and she always had, uh, well, this is instant coffee Folgers. But I remember she used uh, Taster's Choice. Do you guys remember drinking Taster's Choice coffee? And it was always like this little tiny jar that she kept up high in a cabinet and I think she had the same jar for at least four straight years. I've never seen the taster's choice ever turn into something else. Hey, good morning everyone. Good to see you Jason. Good to see you Jenny. Good to see you Dennis. Oh, and by the way, I need to share this over to my Facebook page. So uh, today I figured we're going to try to do something different. We're going to try to do the impossible. Because I always say, enjoy coffee with Rayborn. We will see if we can enjoy instant coffee with Rayborn. I don't know. We'll see if it works out. Ooh. Oh, that's so good. Oh, that's amazingly awesome. Remember, it's always the second sip that's got to tell you whether it's good or not. Are you ready? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh boy, that is um fantastic. Mm. All right. Well, I said I'd try. So. Uh, just going to quickly share this over onto my page, but, uh, oh yeah, definitely on a scale of, of one to delicious, one to ten, ten being delicious, that's, that's somewhere in the negative category, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure. Sorry, it's taking me two seconds to get this shared over here. Usually don't like to pause my videos, but that's what we do. So, well, good morning, everybody. I hope everyone is doing well. And, uh, you know, by the way, I didn't get any comments on people's mug of the day. So please, at the end of the video, take a picture of your mug. Uh, this one, I'm trying, this is called my make-believe mug, all right? Because whatever I put into it, I'm at least hoping in one regard, it might be Starbucks. So I was thinking... All right, if I put this Folgers in there, it's instant coffee. But if I just believe hard enough, it will taste good and it'll be good for my heart. But listen, end of the video, take a picture of what you're drinking today and uh, post it below. I would be very, very interested. So uh, remember, all of our time together at Coffee with Raveborn is about uh, uh, celebrating uh, the community online, and it's also going through a devotional where we get to look at different aspects about uh, God and just try to uh, find some peace and some encouragement, uh, some encouraging words. So uh, if you have your Solid Joys Bible app, or if you have printed out your uh, Solid Joys Bible app, and guess what? I got to today. I had a friend stop over here and drop me off some copy paper. I don't know, maybe I, as much as we all should never be wasteful, but I was like, you know what? I have so much copy paper. I'm gonna use two pages. And the second page only was for one line. I, I just forgot to press the print on both sides option. But listen, I had enough paper to put on two. So very cool, thank you so much, Dennis. So. Uh, we are paper set over here. So, well, I know you can't post. No, no, no. After the video, you can post your uh, pictures. So when the video's done, hit end, take a photo, 
and then find the video again and post in. So, like we did our IKEA names. All right. Well, this morning we have our devotional, and uh, it's probably it's pretty interesting. A um, little bit of history. Do you guys know? Uh, just to give you a little bit of guess, I'm gonna lower this some and bring it in. All right. There we go. Now it's a little more friendly. I feel like I'm with you. You know, I feel like way over here, here. Okay. So I want you to we're like talking in my living room. So, um, how many over here remember the age of the Babylonian exile when the empire was high and mighty and they had taken over the Israelites? Do you guys remember uh, what year? Uh, what year that happened in? I'll give you some some time. But uh, there were several um, authors in the Old Testament who wrote about the Babylonian captivity. Probably one of my favorites would have been Isaiah because Isaiah kind of breaks up his writings almost into two books. Uh, uh, maybe written in his life at two separate times or, or reflecting at two moments uh, during the Babylonian captivity and then after the Babylonian captivity. You always notice in Isaiah, uh, you read the first 39 chapters and it's got this kind of woeful uh, attitude. There's still some joyous passages in there, but some woeful attitudes. But then also, hey, good morning, Mike. Um, but then you read uh, chapter 40 and it starts, comfort, comfort, my people. It's like, the, 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 the clouds are, are separating out. The sun is shining down. So any guesses on the years? Could it be the year 2000 BC, 1000 BC, 500 BC, 300 BC? When do you think the Babylonian captivity uh, happened? Uh, Ezekiel mentioning about that, right? Okay. Hmm. Oh boy, it just it just gets better as you as you go. By the way, Mike, you just joined in a little late. This is uh, instant coffee. Braving it today. Oh, all right. It is boy. That's bad. It like puts your brain in a different world. All right. <clears throat> I don't even know if that's a thing. All right. Hey, John, good to see you. So, well, let me begin. Um, I'll pray, and, uh, and uh, we'll get started. Father, thank you so much for this day, for this opportunity to, to talk to each other online and uh, uh, to spend time with each other uh, each morning. And Lord, we just pray that you would bless our study, our little devotion, and uh, uh, so grateful for uh, all that you provide for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So... Any guesses on the Babylonian captivity? I haven't seen even one. You know you can use instant coffee to etch into steel, right? Stop hurting yourself. Yeah, I know. I've always seen the uh, Coca-Cola trick. You can pour that onto your car battery and just clean up those, those nodules, right? So I have over here the Babylonian captivity. I haven't seen one guess. Not fun, guys. All right, you got to play the game. All right, someone said 1000 B.C., uh, divide that in two and add 15, or just about there. Roughly 550 BC. So think, think 500 years plus before Christ was born, okay? So that's where we are in history. So this is where we have um, our time together, okay? So it says here, uh, Jeremiah 29, uh, first uh, few verses here, four and five, and then seven. So if you have your Bibles with you, you can go to Jeremiah 29. If you have your Solid Joys app, pull that out. It says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat of their produce. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile. And pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare, you will find your welfare. What does that mean? He says, I'm sending you into exile. Uh, you're going to be under the authority of these Babylonians. It's not going to be like the days that you had on your own. 
but instead you're going to be serving someone else and when you're there I want you to do as you've normally done build your houses plant your gardens and pray for those above you pray for those who I am sending you to because their welfare is going to be your welfare so we begin if that was true for God's exiles in Babylon it would seem to be even more true for Christian exiles in this very Babylon like world what then shall we do we should do ordinary things that need to be done build houses live in them plant gardens we're just talking about how everyone now is an expert gardener this does not contaminate you if you do it all for the real king and not just eye service as men pleasers but seek the welfare of the place where god has placed you think of yourself as sent there by god for his glory you're an ambassador wherever you are sent okay that's your representation okay pray to the lord on behalf of your city ask for great and good things to happen for the city ask it that they happen by god's power and for his glory never lose sight of the ultimate good that the city needs a thousand times more than it needs material prosperity christians care about all suffering especially eternal suffering that's the greatest danger that every city faces remember the story of jonah and the whale jonah and the great fish for others jonah and the big fish all right it wasn't a whale but he was asked to be sent to where to nineveh to a place where people hated people like jonah and they were at odds with each other god says i'm sending you there the whole way over there jonah complained each and every way but think about the end of the story when jonah finally made it to nineveh after spending three days in the body of a great fish spat out onto the land and then began to preach god's words to a people that did not like him but he really was the one that probably didn't like the ninevites well they ended up turning their hearts i mean this was a city of people who have harmed him before and his people before and yet these were the people who had eternal security as a as a something that was on the line and so he says i'm going to send you here and you're going to ask for the great welfare of these people and their welfare will be your welfare we continue to read this does not mean but neither god nor his people are indifferent to the health and safety and prosperity and freedom of the city we all want these things jesus says you shall love your neighbor as yourself in fact the lord says in jeremiah that loving your city is a way of loving yourself if it's the welfare you will find your welfare this does not mean we give up in our exile orientation peter says to christians that we are sojourners and exiles first peter 2 11. paul says our citizenship is in heaven we're going to be talking about that in our next wednesday philippian study on joy as we finish chapter 3. in fact we will do most good for this world by keeping a steadfast freedom from its beguiling attractions we will serve our city best by getting our values from the city that is to come hebrews 14. we will do our city most good by calling as many of its citizens as we can to be the citizens of the jerusalem from above galatians 4 26. so let's live go build your houses go plant your gardens let's do so much good that the natives will want to meet our king now that is some really bold encouragement uh what are your thoughts on on hearing that uh you can also comment below i mean if 
It almost sounds a, a little unfamiliar being sent out as ambassadors. Um, I remember, and I'm going to try to uh, pull up his name real quick. Um, his name was, I didn't have to look it up, uh, Andrew Brunson. Do you remember a story about the name of Andrew Brunson? Uh, Andrew Brunson had made it into the news about two or three years ago. And uh, he was a Christian pastor serving over in Turkey. He belonged to a church uh, that had been over serving the Muslim country for nearly uh, 20 plus years. But in recent times, change of regimes, uh, more of an authoritarian takeover, uh, put the Christian churches that were already in that country at risk. Well, that was Andrew Brunson. And he was thrown in jail for almost two years in isolated confinement. He was a Christian pastor that had once been a part of churches like ours at Morning Star Church. It's the, the ARP, the Associate Reformed Presbyterian Church. He had started in the ARP. He became a missionary. He was sent over to Turkey. And while there, the welfare of his country was his welfare. He was an ambassador. Everything he did for the glory of God. Well, when he was spending time in jail, Andrew Brunson was writing. He was able to write letters to his wife and his kids, but he would only be able to see them once in a blue moon. And while he was there, he continued to pray for the peoples that were putting him in captivity. All he had was his Bible with him. That was it. He wasn't allowed to have anything else. And slowly but surely, his prayers, people praying for him, his condition, he never complained. While he says, some days I felt extremely tired, hungry, sometimes depressed, he kept praying for those in his church, for those in Turkey. And finally, negotiations came through. And Andrew Brunson made his way over. In fact, immediately upon landing in the U.S., maybe some of us might recall, was it maybe a year ago, that he was in the Oval Office and he took time to pray on national television. But none of it was about his personal welfare. While we all don't want to have uh, suffering in our lives, we would rather experience joy and prosperity. But he used that opportunity not to point to himself at the end of the story, but he pointed to God. So with that in mind, I think it's a wonderful story about Andrew Brunson. I'm going to post an article below. I would love for you to read about it. It's really encouraging when you learn about what he's gone through. Uh, it's uh, just a phenomenal story. But our devotion ends. Whatever city you're in, whatever government you're in, hey, Shelby, good to see you. It's all about pray for those above you that when they see you, they would glorify God. Hey, guys. Well, guys, enjoy your coffee. Uh, comment below. I want to see those mugs, and I will see you tomorrow morning, all right? Have a good one. Talk to you later. Bye.